Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I talk about the summer preaching planning, and we discuss this week's message in our series entitled Growing Pains. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Day edition of Armchair Preaching. This is uh, we're recording this as, as in our normal schedule on uh, the Tuesday after the Sunday, the Memorial Day Sunday. Uh, Memorial Day was yesterday, and today is Tuesday, the twenty eighth. For us, for those that are listening, might be Tuesday because you might hear this this afternoon. You might not hear it, but uh, this is the Memorial Day edition, and it kicks yes. off is the unofficial. It's summertime. Kick off to the yeah. summer. I mean, yeah. when, tech, when is a, when is summer officially? Is it June twenty first, second twenty first, June twenty first. Uh, technically, that is the summer solstice. I don't think it changed. I think that's one that doesn't change, right? Because yeah. I know like spring, uh, the spring and fall equinox can change. Like by two, who cares? But no, it, nobody but here, cares. Here, but it's, it's, here in Florida, is, we never really no, mind that much because no. summer began two months ago. Yes, yes. It's really now though, because as you were noting uh, yesterday or in a meeting earlier, that you know it was it was hitting triple digit, digits yesterday. Yeah, it was in, very in, hot in yesterday in some places, and I, I know when I was driving. Um, my little temperature gauge definitely hit triple digits a couple wow. times, you wow. know, in different places, you know, go 97 and 100. Yeah. And, and I'm having to, I'm having to, you're, you, you know, you're, you're a runner. So this is the time of year you have to really think about your running schedule and when are you going to run you can't, and where you can't are you going to run. You can't argue with heat. I mean, yeah. it, it, it will take its toll on you. You can't chase no matter, the shade, though, No matter right? what, yeah. what, kind of, what level runner you are, it's still going to affect there. you. Yeah, I ran seven miles yesterday, and I, I but I got up, you know, pretty early to do so. And uh, Oh, my goodness. Those people who run, you know, five, ten miles or so in the middle of the day, in the middle of the summer— I don't. I to to this day. I I and I ran run for years. Yeah. I still don't get it. Well, I so it's funny because I can't think. I I saw a guy. I was driving. And I saw a guy yesterday at one o'clock in the afternoon in the dead middle of town. I mean, no shade anywhere in sight. And I was like, how is that guy doing that? But then I started thinking when I was a high school and college runner. I always ran in the afternoon. I mean, definitely high school because we they they weren't allowed yeah. to to have practice. Now we always ran in public parks that were pretty shaded. pretty shaded, but fairly shaded. But it's still, I mean, it's still summer in Florida, and yeah. and or you know September October still summerish kind of time for anyway. Yeah, we're, we're not we're saying <laughs> it's all this summertime. We're not just talking about the weather here, but we are. The, summer creates some preaching uh, opportunities and um, challenges, right. and we were just talking before we hit record about some of those challenges. So I just talk about for people that don't know what from a preaching, teaching, planning standpoint, and even even in the actual delivery, what what does it do this season um, to the, the the preaching ministry of? And I, I would say this is. I, would you agree? I think this is a pretty widespread. Um, this creates differences. Summertime widespread. is always is always in a every church animal in yeah. every church. Yeah. Every church. In every America. church I've been in. Every church yeah. I know about. There's always us something. Too. Us too. Us yeah. too. Yeah. So, what are those? Some of the things that that really create challenges. Well, one of the first things is vacations. Yeah, is that uh, even? I mean, the smallest church in, in America has to think about the fact that the pastor's going to be on vacation at some point, and mm-hmm. what do you do? Mm-hmm. So, who's who's going to fill the pulpit at that point? And yeah. and and then that's a whole question. Maybe that's another podcast. Is a, the topic is a. How do you choose who who goes on the in our when in our case we call it the preaching team, but in that case it would be who who does pulpit supply? Is it just a the, anybody who is available? We, you know, it, there's a there's this presbytery official pres, pulpit supply list, you know. So so what goes into choosing someone who who is in the pulpit other than the usual person or persons who are in the pulpit? So that's so and that's and then the, the role of vacations and all that. And you you probably know about churches where pastors yeah take. Two months, yeah. Not just 
two weeks or a week. They take yeah. two months off uh, from from church, and they use it as vacation and as a planning planning, season. planning cycle. Yeah, and and that technically that's actually what I negotiated here. I've I yet to do thinking, it. I was just thinking that same thing. I was like, I seem to remember. Yeah, at I some negotiated point. not not having sabbatical after seven years, which would be longer. But just to have, but every week, every summer, it was supposed to be you know take a vacation and, and tack on another two weeks of, of planning. But it's what happened was happened. the very first summer I got here was COVID. So yeah. we were all frantically trying to figure out yeah. how to do church and be church as uh, in a COVID world, and that just that has not. Has not manif- it, manifested it has not itself. Not manifest itself later. So maybe you know. Maybe in two more years, like five year anniversary or something like that. Well, uh, two more years when you're due for a sabbatical. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when our, that's actually, actually, actually started. So. <laughs> so, so vacations is one issue. Though. So you know, we just and not just pulpit. and not just the preaching side of it too. I mean, f- but it does it does affect us because we also have a support you know worship team. So right. making sure we have liturgists and assistants and the music ministry. I mean, we're not directly responsible all the time for finding those people, but it does affect yeah. kind of our planning. I mean, it's sure. just not, right? Yeah, yeah, because not only is it the planning and, and seeing that the work is done, but all of those people who do that planning on a regular basis also go on vacations, yeah. and they have time off that they need to consider, we need to consider as well. So there may be weeks where we do, where we will plan for the next three weeks and just say we're not going to be meeting for the next three weeks because every if y'all didn't know this listening those listening every week on yeah. a tuesday afternoon a group of people who are involved in all of the worship services weekend week worship services sit down in a room together and we talk through the services big yeah. picture things detail things we talk through talk through the certain we unpack the things that have gone on the previous week we do all of that every single week and so there may be weeks in the summertime where we don't yeah, just because there's there's so many people who are missing. Yeah, and in 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 addition to that, there are also summer activities around the church that kind of create uh, scheduling uh, issues. Like we've got vacation Bible school coming up in a couple of weeks, where um, you know that 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 takes some of the planning time away from some of our typical folks, um, and uh, you know that actually affects the worship experience on the Sunday after VBS because we actually do a vacation Bible school Sunday in our modern worship mm-hmm. service, so that creates a challenge. It also creates a challenge. I mean, locationally uh, in the classic side, you know the 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 eight fifteen service, um, you know, yeah, changing ready to make that move, changing locations. This Sunday, is yeah. that right? It's this Sunday, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't know. Go to the right I'm, place. I'm You'll be there. Sort of, like, where is everybody? <laughs> yeah, they're, oh, yeah, they're in. The, we're in the chapel, right? Be so, and and there's there's some beauty to that. Um, in much the same way, in Vine, we'll go into quote unquote the round mm-hmm. for a few weeks in the middle of the summer. Uh, we we try to do that in. With some intentionality, uh, one, because we know a lot of people are on vacation, so a lot of people are traveling, so our numbers shift a little bit um, in the summertime, and, and so... And, and we, do have, we do have seasonal residents here, too, yeah. so the, the uh, affectionately, affectionately known as the snowbirds, yeah. and so we, we have the, that group of people who travel uh, to cooler climates, uh, yeah. at least cooler... Nighttime, nighttime climate. Uh, yeah. Daytime is just as hot Some, everywhere else. Some places, but, uh, yeah. But, uh, but they, so they're gone, and then our then our year rounders folks are also you know vacationing here or there. So it, cre- it creates a. It, it, I think this is also true universally that yeah. that especially in Florida, that the attendance in churches goes down noticeably. But we use that as an opportunity to. I, I hesitate to use the, the the phrase mix up the worship experience, but but we alter the worship experience in not only because there are fewer people but also it gives us an opportunity to do things in a little bit more of an intimate fashion so that the the worship ex- the worship experience is 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 less routine and mm-hmm. less rote so for for example the classic service going into the chapel the chapel yeah. is a beautiful opportunity for people to and it's not permanent it's it's you know it's a, it typically is a temporary kind of yeah, thing memorial day to labor day but yeah. I mean, if you haven't been in our chapel those listening uh the acoustics in the chapel yeah. are tremendous and you can hear people singing and yeah. and and the and even the communion i don't know i 
I've said this before. I, I always liked the 815. I'm actually looking forward to 815. I typically have a little bit of struggle getting out of bed to do the 815 <laughs> service because I'm not I'm not super great at being the morning person. Just not ready to talk to people. You no, talked no, about that I'm, before. I'm up. You're, you're I'm up. up. I'm yeah. up. I'm up for a long time. Just not usually ready. To, but but this Sunday I will be because I love worshiping in yeah. the, in the chapel with the with the folks there. It, it, there's something that reminds me of my own upbringing in, in small church spaces. And then the vine the same way when we go into the round we do that with some intentionality to um, remind people to look at each other, Mm -hmm. that we're worshiping together. Mm -hmm. We're not worshiping towards the stage kind of thing. You know, there's that, there's that sense of community and camaraderie that sometimes does get lost in, in larger spaces that are more spread out, you know, things Mm -hmm. like that. So there are, there are challenges to the the summer preaching, but they're also great, great opportunities for, for joy. You know, know, I know one of the things is not necessarily related to, the preaching, but all, it is related to you and me. Um, <clears throat> we also have to. It's very. It's it's more challenging to have both of us gone at the same time. Yeah. Rarely does it happen, and we try not to make that happen because yeah. it needs to you at least you or one of us needs to be here. Yeah, uh, for anything that that could come up. So that's another one of those. Pieces of which the, I think this summer we're we're perfect. I don't, yeah. I don't yeah, I think we're you're prim- gone in, in July going, yeah. and I'm gone in August and yeah, so. yeah. I don't think we have any right now yeah. where it's both of us out. That has yeah. happened on occasion. It has happened. We try not but, to let that happen. try not to let that happen so that there's pastoral coverage. And we're very blessed because uh, unlike some of the smaller churches that you and I know, we can typically I don't say typically I would say at 99 percent of the time I would say 100 percent of the time we're able to find we have a preaching team where somebody that we are familiar, you and I are familiar with, and the congregation is also familiar with is in the pulpit. Yes. Like we don't, uh, whereas in other congregations, that's not, that's, you know, smaller churches, that's not yeah. that they, no, you're right. they, they bring know, in a, they, <clears throat> they bring in they're not a stranger to the larger Presbyterian church, the pres- Presbytery, but they would be a stranger to the congregation. And you, I'm sure you've done that. I've done that as mm-hmm. well. I mean, uh, being an associate at one of the larger churches in our Presbytery, I've gotten called from some, some smaller churches to come in and preach. And that, that represents an opportunity, but also a challenge as well. Um, and so it's, uh, yeah, we are in a unique position to to have to continue the sense of community, even in the summer preaching plan, and 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 why we're able to continue series in the summer, which mm-hmm. some churches aren't able to do in the summer because they know they've got two weeks off, three weeks off. They're going to be off this week and this and week, then and then, you know, usually and, it's the message to the guest preacher is. Preacher's choice. Yeah, preacher's choice. Preach whatever yeah. you're ready to preach. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we, we are, we're able to do a little bit more continuity mm-hmm. um, where some some folks aren't. So that's that's a that's a real that's a uh, that's a blessing for mm-hmm. our congregation. But um, we are uh, we are headed into the summer. We are we we are even this week are going to start seeing some of those changes because the, the eight fifteen services is going into the chapel. We are going to start to have some of those scheduling. Uh, mm-hmm. weeks, uh, we're, we're going to, there are going to be a few weeks this week, next week where you and I'll both be here. But then when we start getting to the 23rd, it's going to be, one of us is going to be gone. The other person's going to be here and we'll have a, a guest, well, guest preacher is not somebody else from the preaching team is yeah. probably a better yeah. way to put it. Right. So it's going to be fun. Yeah. going to be a fun summer. You looking forward to it? I am. We have, uh, we have some, uh, we, we try to, I, I usually leave vacation days on the table each year. Yeah. Uh, last year I didn't because we had a 40th anniversary trip we threw in there, which, which took, took a big chunk out of the, out of the days, but, uh, I'm trying to do better. I, I don't, I'm not a very good vacationer. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll take the time and all, but Seal, Seal always gets on to me about, uh, you know, it takes me like three days to, to just, just get my relax. brain to quit quivering and yeah. twitching with all the things, thoughts about the, the the church and the life of the in you know, a community and also, so I'm I'm trying to do better about that and trying to take take the days that have been allocated so that, because they're there for a reason they're yeah. there to bring refreshment yeah. to and resetting and all, all of that uh, getting away and uh, so I'm I'm hoping that uh, hoping to do more of that still I've still made leave days on the table but this this summer I'm fewer looking, days fewer days uh, see we'll we'll be up in uh, Georgia mountains for a little while yeah. and we'll do uh, we'll do a, a trip to to Hilton Head again which we love yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, on our, usually on around our anniversary. Yeah, yeah. I I have left days on the table. You know, before I got here, uh, I did not 
I didn't, I never took a vacation that was longer than three or four days at a time. Never. I mean, before I got here, then I, then I, I got here and there was, there was a larger team. There was more backup. Um, you know, so it was easier to take those days. It's easier, easier to take those days when there's a good team around you. And, and we have that. I, I still even even when we take days, I still have a hard. That's why I like we like to do cruises because it's so much easier just to like. I hey, look, know. There's nothing know. to. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You can't even email people or anything. You just you know you're you're totally away and and so we're. Gonna, that is my favorite part about a cruise is just the the ability to completely disconnect. Yeah, we're taking a cruise. <clears throat> we're taking a cruise in a in a few weeks, and that's going to be a lot of fun. But where this, are you going? Where are you going? We're doing a. Uh, this is actually the f- the first uh, vacation that we've taken in a f- two years that has not been cold weather vacation. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Last year we we did a summer cruise, but it was in Alaska, so that was cold. It was yes. cold the whole time. We were you you I guys follow, went. Follow you guys after. followed just and and it was not warm. It was not warm. It was cold yeah. the whole time, which I enjoy. I I, I enjoyed that change of pace because our life here is hot. Now, this one we're doing. Um, a a kind of a, a Western Caribbean Mexico Good for you. Nicaragua Belize Good for you. Guatemala. Um we're gonna be gone we're gonna be on the cruise ship on July fourth, which we've not that's that's the first time that's ever happened. So that that's gonna be interesting. We're gonna see how that well, I expect to hear I expect a phone call from you from on my birthday the day before just so you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, from I think we'll be in Guatemala that yeah, day. Yeah, expect phone call from Guatemala. That's right. So you know. That's all right. <laughs> well, like, the, you can expect all you that's want. Right, that's right. You can expect it. It's not going to happen. But because I want, I don't buy the internet package. I do uh, no, not. I do, do not, not buy the. Internet I do not buy the internet package. So yeah. uh, Julie usually does because she likes to make sure she can get a hold of her mom and, and oh, things shit. like that. But uh, I do not buy the internet package. But it's um, we're we're f- we're we're going to be closing out. We got two more. T- this week is the last week coming mm-hmm. up in this little mini series called growing pains Mm -hmm. doing a little uh church um the early days of the church you know and it was a it was kind of a a carryover from the post easter celebration we did the great stories but Mm -hmm. we picked this this really we picked the story up kind of at the end of the great stories deal there was a little bit of ascension sunday yeah a little bit of a break because then we had mother's day in there so Mm -hmm. We followed the church calendar a little bit, followed the secular calendar a little bit, then picked this back up with mm-hmm. uh, with uh, Pentecost Sunday last week and then Trinity Sunday this week, which I didn't mention Trinity Sunday. You did a great job of weaving that in there. I liked how you did that. Slipped it in there, didn't you? You yeah. did. You did a great. And, I think you and, did a fantastic and, job and, doing and, that. I was like, man, I wish I had done that because that and is... the rest of the service in classic was uh, this. Paul Sewich had done a great a job, and Sam Carlton had done a great job of just you know the but, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Yeah, you know, man, just... when you slipped that in there, I was like, that is such a good way to but we'll get to that yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. i thought that was such a good way i was like that because i was thinking how am i going to slip trinity yeah, it's not a trinitarian know? passage it's not a trinitary passage but it yeah uh, we'll get to it yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, but i i did i did like how you you were able to slip that in there in, in a way that was in keeping with the theme of this week mm-hmm. which is the initial pain point of the early yeah. church the church has experienced fantastic exponential growth we both talked about that and this pain point is external. The first pain point that they experience yeah. is external. Um, as you're jumping into this passage from Acts chapter 4, and I went back and pulled into Acts chapter yeah, 3. You, nice. you referenced summar- it. Summarized it, You yeah. summarized it. I did a little bit more kind of highlighting it, uh, and I, we can talk about why mm-hmm. I, I felt the urgency to do that. Um, what were you it – it's a big section. It's a big – yeah. As is every week. I mean, we say this every week, but it, 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 there's a lot of meat there, right? So, how do you determine what portion? You know, what's the cut of meat that you're headed? I mean, what's the cut of meat that you were really folk? I mean, how did you determine what cut of meat that you're gonna dive into well, for, with this? Uh, first off, the uh, the one of the larger challenges. I don't know if you feel this. One of the larger challenges of looking at anything that happened in the early church. Is not coming away from it saying, "Go and do likewise." Yeah, you know, just t- take what they they were doing this, so you go do this. Yeah, you know, you have to, it's not it's not a one for one you know mapping. So okay, then in that case, I'm going to stand up and preach a boring sermon in front of three thousand people and 
wait for the Holy Spirit to to yeah. do something really uh, yeah. really cool. Um, so it's not quite a go and do likewise. The, the, the question is, hey, where do you? What's going on here that we can grab onto that does lift up? It does transcend time and does make sense as an applic- true application of, of the text. So so that's been. Anytime I'm in the Book of Acts, uh, that's that that's one of those questions that rumbles around, or or maybe almost a warning to myself: make sure you don't don't say go and do exactly what you just read yeah. in, in the modern day, unless exactly what you just read is in fact the principle that transfers and crosses all all millennium. Uh, so that was part of it. But then the text itself, the answer to your particular question was the text itself was the uh, was the resistance text. Yeah. And um, and so I really I, my focus was on that resistance text. You know what led to it. Um, what were the what? How did they pr- move through that moment uh, together? And what were some of the after effects? And then ultimately, what is it that we that we do with that? So I, yeah. I, I, for me, it was really wanted to 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 look look long and hard of it. And you know, we, we, I tend to have a shorter window in, uh, in window classic, time in yeah. classic than there is in in, in Vine. Vine. So yeah. uh, so to do that in a in a more concise way. Yeah, I, and I felt the sense you know a sense of of wanting some connection between what we talked about last week and what we talked about this week. And even going back to the mm-hmm. Pentecost season uh, season uh, to some extent with this, you know, the connection point to um to the the essential nature of Jesus Christ's work in the church, right? So yeah. I wanted to make a really big point that the reason that Peter and John are facing this resistance is because Christ faced faced this resistance, and they're not doing. Yeah. Peter and John are not doing anything on their own power. They're doing everything under the power of Jesus, and that's why Peter continually just he's hammering that drum yeah. over and over and over again. Every I sermon you did a great job of bringing bringing that out again. It's not it it, it wasn't that Peter and John were saying, "Look at me, yeah. you know, see see what I'm doing." They were constantly pointing pointing. And I wrote it down several times, pointing back to. Or I like that they sound like Jesus. They sound like Jesus, but you know, and yet we thought we're done with Jesus. Yeah. Here they are doing. The, they sound like what Jesus was doing. We thought we're done with Jesus, and now they're back. Yeah, the whole, the whole disruption of Jesus is back. Yeah, and, and I, I, you know, which ticked them off. Yeah, and this is one of those challenging points, and and we both, I, I, I got the sense that you had a similar kind of uh, challenge, or you were feeling the similar challenges. Uh, one of the parts that was in my notes that didn't really emphasize it a whole lot is. You know the the good deed that kicks off this resistance. You know what I mean. You talked about it in your. I, I really liked how you brought up the the servant evangelism thing and how people, even in the face of a good deed, somehow found a problem with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then then that was that the ultimately it's any time you're you're and how the full circle the way I you know listen to it the full circle kind of framework is the good deed is not what they have a problem with they have a problem with Jesus and that so we expect we should expect the challenge we should yeah. expect pain we should or pain we should expect pushback mm-hmm. anytime we're doing something in Jesus name good or whether it's preaching and you're talking about sin or a doctrine that it's really heavy which you brought in very masterful and masterfully with the Trinity or you're doing something that really nobody should have a problem with, uh, which is a good deed. I mean, a good deed, how do you look at a he- the healing of a person and then arrest a couple of guys? Yeah. I mean, a guy got healed, but then you go back and go, well, that's what they did with Jesus anyway, right? I mean, Jesus, they, they couldn't deny what Jesus was doing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but they denied the power that Jesus was 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 was. Was and, bringing and, to and, the and, table. and it was it, part of what was offensive to him. And I think you did a great job of bringing this bringing this out. Was that is that they they were they wanted to point to Jesus. They they the very thing you said a moment ago that that that, that this wasn't in my power. That everything was done. Salvation is done in Jesus' name. And you just think about what that means to the Jewish people. That that, that the Jewish leaders rather that is that is an affront to the entire system they've got built around them. Yeah. And so of course they're going to be they're going to be reacting to that. And I, you know, there's a part of me that's, that, uh, you know, the thought exercise part of me goes, you know, what would happen if somebody came in with a different angle on the Christian faith than than I have right now, and we're, get, we're poking and prodding at my own mm. beliefs? Would I react to it? Which are the pieces that I'm holding on to 
you know, unapologetically and rightly and, 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 and firmly and which of the pieces on that I may not need to be holding on to as, as hard yeah. and hard. The, open, the open-handed versus the closed-fisted exactly. beliefs, right? Yeah. And sometimes we make, and so it, 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 it kind of dovetails into what we're going to talk about this coming week, which is just this, you know, that what happens when the pain is in-house, you know, yes. and, 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 you know, that, you know, the, the thing that gets me about, about these these early chapters in in the book of Acts is especially this this Acts three four piece. Um, what struck me, and it didn't really make it into the message this week, was that Peter and John were not looking to evangelize. Right, the the, the whole reason this happened was because they were just going to the temple, doing their ordinary normal yeah. things. Right, yeah. they were just going to pray. And then they were. A, a I actually costed. thought you were going to, you, when you were going talking about that. I thought you were going to be that. That was going to be your lead into. They accused them of being ordinary, unschooled men. Yeah, uh, which which is tr- true, of course. But you were just saying that in and of itself tells you that this is an ordinary. There's nothing. There is nothing outstanding about them that they even saw in themselves. Yeah, they just did what they did, and then the opportunities presented themselves. Yeah, and then God. And see, that's the thing that God presents the opportunity. That God presents the opportunity, and and that they were ready. Mm-hmm. They were ready for the opportunity. But even there, you see the resistance. It's like, you know, when 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 Peter is 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 answering the question to the rulers he 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 asks it almost in a conditional way like if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man he's almost like saying look are you really asking us like are you did you really arrest us and keep us in prison overnight just to ask us how we like how this good thing happened yeah, yeah. and then he goes into Jesus Christ and then he goes into it it's 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 almost as though Peter and John are like can't believe the yeah it's almost incredulous yeah, yeah. it's it's like really are you kidding me really guys <laughs> this is because the names that are mentioned Annas Caiaphas these are people who were absolutely aware of who Jesus was right yeah. they're absolutely aware they're they're absolutely in the know about you can't have the ministry that is described prior to that to that moment um Without full awareness of who Jesus is. Well, you and I both mentioned this, that that, that these were the men. Uh, you, you mentioned it a little later in your sermon. I yeah. mentioned it a little earlier in my sermons. This idea is that the accusation that Peter levies every single time he preaches in you, Acts you hit chapter that hard, two. Actually, yeah. I, mean, I was going to ask you about that. What what was what was what were you thinking? Did you well, did you I, leave anything on the table with that? As, as well, well, I did leave some implications. I and, did leave it on the table because I didn't mention the specific names of Annas and Caiaphas. Right. I did not mention and them. The, the others and John and Alexander, who were not really aren't mentioned in the gospels but but Caiaphas and Annas I mean they yeah. they they they, fit, they they factor but I didn't I was just like man that's that's at least 5 or 6 minutes of explanation yeah. for and again this is like where you to what end yeah, yeah to what end and this is also where you kind of like if I had been in the classic service, I'm I I would have probably mentioned them with the understanding that like as you did with understanding that I'm I'm hedging my bets that the vast majority of the congregation has at least some framework about who those those yeah. guys are. Whereas in Vine, ah, uh, and maybe this is wrong, but I I'm hedging my bets that they don't, and I'm yeah. gonna have it's gonna take me too long to. To yeah. explain it is that except yeah, to say no, that these rulers are the a, people that signed it's a, it's the death a clock warrant. decision. You got to yeah. you got to make yeah you absolutely you got to make them. And it's already running up against the clock. I think yeah. I was at thirty ish minutes or twenty nine minutes this week, mm-hmm. and and I and there were certain things I I added in the moment that I hit a little harder just because I'm like I'm feeling the pushback, not feeling pushback, but feeling the the, the, the lean in, yeah, yeah. the lean in, like kind of the sure. they need more of something or, or another. But that I knew. Do you know what I think about with that? <clears throat> with the fact that, and I love that you were hitting that hard with the um, you were the one. They kept saying you were the one who did this. You did this. You know. I think about the fact that <clears throat> that um, later in history mm-hmm. that the um, the oppression of the Jews and the, yeah. and the the violence against the Jews was done. <clears throat> interpreting these passages, these these very passages, with you Jewish people, every all, yeah. all of you Jewish people did this. I it's thought like, about that too. Yeah, like, yeah. So that's, that's why, not, it's not, it's not. So a, you and only you, yeah. Jewish people. Yeah, because well, and then later <laughs> on, you know, 
and this this goes into the Gentile inclusion later too, because the Gentiles, when they're preached to, um, they're, they're, the, the the sin is still mentioned as reference to the cross of Jesus. So they're lumped in, but not in the same way by Peter. Now Peter is, but we have to forget it too. Peter and John are both good. Jewish men, yeah. and and by evidence, evidence by the fact that in Acts three, what are they doing? They're being good Jewish men. Going to, they're going to, going to the temple at the time of prayers, mm-hmm. so they're not. They haven't abandoned that. And in fact, the early Jewish Christians, they celebrated two holy days every single weekend. You know, they celebrated Sabbath and the Lord's Day. So they celebrated Sabbath from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, and then they had the Lord's Day, the Resurrection mm-hmm. Day, on Sunday. So they were being good Jewish people for the, for the you know, for, for all intents and purposes, because they did not see Jesus as a discontinuity, but in fact, they saw it in continuity with their Jewishness. It's why Peter spends so much time talking about the Old Covenant in both Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3, and when he's answering Acts chapter 4, you know, he references um, the people the, the people of Israel, the stone that the builders mm-hmm. rejected, which neither one of us... <laughs> no, nope, didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> As a, man, that's one of those but there things. Was a, like, but you, which you rejected, that, that was in yes, there. There's a little jab. That's a little that difference. Yeah. You builders, I mean, yeah. he's like... And you know that's it's, this. I I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too. I love I love his 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 use of the 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 psalm um, the psalm there. But then he he does change it right. He he changes um, the 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 psalm ever so slightly by talking about the stones that you the builders rejected. Mm-hmm. Um, that that uh, that. What did you think about that? There. I, just, I, 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 I didn't want to go into the, for the same reason you've been talking about, into the, the, the reference to, to it, but I just, what stood out was the, uh, the, the, the change to it, that he, he personalized it. Yeah. You know, that you, you rejected, that's a, that's an old, that's a scripture that's part of their, their worship services. It's that part of their worship predates services. predates them by yeah. hundreds of years, yeah. so now it's very personal to them. So I, they, um, Yeah, their anticipation is that it's somebody else, and he's like, no, yeah. no, no, it's not somebody yeah, else. Yeah. It's, it's you, and it's an extension of what, he's talk, what he talks about to the crowd earlier in Acts chapter 3, when they're, when they're almost trying to deify John and Peter at the healing of the man. Um. He goes back and 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 references the patriarchs. I mean, he he goes back and does the very thing that God does throughout the old covenant, which is talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then tacking on Jesus mm-hmm. there too. So, and then when he gets into the the presence of the council, it is it is now it's now it's you you are the builders you are the builders that that rejected him so it just you know lots of so lo- much here lots of lots of stuff there at the end you really landed on uh, several key points mm. um you talked about the expectation of 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 opposition, opposition yeah. conflict, uh, uh, ex- external conflict yeah. specifically. You talked about the does, the need to stay on message, make godly, yeah. wise decisions, yeah. come back to Jesus. As you're landing that plane, uh, and and what we were talking about earlier is, um, you know, you, you, then you in the beginning when you're talking about the expecting the opposition, you started to bring about some very specific examples of opposition that we do face as Christians today, mm-hmm. um, specifically related to what we what we believe doctrinally, right? Yeah, and and that was, uh, and I can't remember if I said it in the online version, but in the in-person version, I said it'd be e- easy to talk about some of the things that, that are controversial in our day and age to, to believe, but the, th- the kinds of things that are just bread and butter things yeah. are, are, these are, there's some serious opposition to, to those who would just, and you know, you had a whole section on the atheist. Yeah. Uh, you talked about atheists want their own church, right? And yeah. They, they, but uh, they they're looking for something that 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 we have. But the the uh, the 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 atheist to this day would just the very fundamental things that we believe. They would just they would push back on that vehemently. So we should should we expect that? Well, I didn't mention this in my message, but you can pretty much go to any Thanksgiving dinner with your family gathered around. You're going to have somebody in there in that family who does is not with you. Yeah. On theologically, they're not with you, or the faith system wise, they're not they're not with you. So. 
Yeah, I mean it's 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 not like we're under the Emperor Nero persecutions with the with the you know the murders or even Paul Saul you know um, the, the persecution being thrown into jail. But are, is there is there a uh, ideological gulf between mm-hmm. us and other people around us? Absolutely, and that's what I was trying to bring out. That yeah. we could, we should, and here's the part of the problem with it: we get surprised that that happens. Yeah. And part of what I'm trying to say is that it's it's been happening all along. You even said that it all along and throughout history. Yeah, I mentioned uh, mentioned the you know, Chinese government clamping down and the in the in in person services. I and, wondered about that because I was thinking the same thing, and it didn't make it into my message. But um, I wondered if you had added that because um, yeah, I, I saw said, I saw in your online you you had some space, you had some time. I wondered if you had added anything about. Oh, I wonder if he talked anything about the persecuted church today yeah. and how they experience growth. Yeah, in the midst of that persecution, and how, how now the Chinese are? I did say the Chinese are sending missionaries to North Korea. Yeah, and yeah. so here they are, they've gone from the oppressed church to the to the missionary the sending uh, church. church. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I, I did bring all all of that out as well. But yeah, that was that was part of the issue is that there's there's going to be opposition. So what do you do in the middle of opposition? You stay on you stay on task. You make sure you make those principled decisions, uh, like uh, like our politician friend uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, said to do and then I mean in the end I wanted to uh, I knew I wanted to land on that th- on the larger message of you, you you remember that the gospel is still the gospel the gospel still the gospel and uh, yeah. and and that's that's our that's our fundamental that is our fundamental uh, truth that we are living into is that is that sin is a, a horrendous you know, stain upon us but grace is a tremendous gift to us and we need to make sure we get both of those right yeah and uh, and and live accordingly yeah, yeah, and but but I on the other hand, what I could have used a, a good dose of was uh, some cheerful courage uh, language yeah. out of the uh, out of this that that the uh, the answer to these these growing pains of the early church was was to to see and this is something I'm not, I I think these all came out of the out yeah. of the text. Here, oh these, sure. Another one of the things that comes out of the text is that you see these guys who had no business being bold. Yeah, they got no in and of themselves. First Nothing. off, they're they're they're. Their personality types, their their occupational level puts them at sort of fringe type characters, not you know the people you would not, expect to not show heroes, up. Heroes, right? Show up in the hero category, yeah. the bold category, and yet yeah. there they were. Yeah. And so, uh, so, so I love that 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 it's and it's not boldness for boldness' sake either. Yeah. That was that was really cool how you were saying that. It's 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 boldness, n- not in not even independent boldness. No, no, it's for the sake of the gospel, which is I mean yeah. that's the point. I mean. One of the things, and, and I, you know, I did that partially because I get frustrated um, in the big C North American church culture. That I heard, I heard some of that. That, from, that that we get, you know, we get very leader focused and you know, risk adverse, leader focused. We become bottom line mentality type people, and I'm like, okay, but but is that if we're expecting? growth out yeah. of that then we're not really reading the scripture the scriptural yeah. basis for growth and as a, you know even your your example at the beginning of your message talking about your former church and using that sort of an evangelism sort of sort of uh, model i mean i can even hear church leaders saying yeah but what good is that going to do us yeah. you know like is that going to is that going to lead to more. Show me the show me the results of the yeah. the, the, the 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 metrics on that. How, yeah. how many how many wins did we get out of that? Yeah, and 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 we've heard this before. We've talked about this on the podcast before. People that say to us, "Well, what's the advantage of us sending funds overseas to foreign yeah. missionaries? You know, what's the advantage of us serving families with special needs? Is it showing up in the offering plate?" Is it showing up in, in 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 attendance? Well, maybe, but that's not the why. I mean, the why is not mm-hmm. the attendance or the the offering plate. The why is the boldness for the gospel in places that need it. You mm-hmm. know, and and when Peter and John are going to the temple that day, they're not looking for an opportunity to grow the church. I mean, they're just looking for an opportunity to worship God and to... to and to, after all, they've just seen the explosive growth yeah. of the church that had, and they, they had to have been aware that they didn't bring the the, 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 the tongues of fire to, to, to rest on, on their heads. They didn't... They, yeah. they weren't the ones who somehow whipped it up from some internal capacity to learn other languages suddenly. They they weren't the one that, that saw, the, saw the lines for the 
for the baptisms. Well, and this is more of an eisegetical kind of thing, which is why it didn't end up in the message. But since it's a podcast and not a sermon, we can talk about it. But I, I always, I always tell, want... tell us what eisegetical is. Once eisegetical again. is reading into the passage something of myself into it, um, mm-hmm. or something of my. I, I, I wonder if. So if I was in Peter and John's shoes, if you and I were Peter and John, after the explosive growth that happens in Acts chapter 2, why would I be going to the temple that day to, to pray? Well, for me, I'd be like wanting to process what's just happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like wanting to talk to God, okay, Lord, I, okay, what, what's going on? What's next? What do you want us to do? I would not be looking for further growth at that point. I'd be looking for, okay, Lord... I'd call that a successful day. Yeah, it's a big day, right? I mean, I, instant mega church. Yeah, I'd be wondering, and and they don't even have a category called the mega church. I mean, they just they're just <laughs> it just doing, was it just was, and and I sometimes I think of the 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 disciples as being some sort of like uber superhuman kind of guys, and I'm like no, well. Even in this passage in Acts chapter 4, we know they're not uneducated. They're, we know they're uneducated. They're common people. So I imagine the emotional, and this is, again, it's not something you preach, but some, it's an interesting thought experiment. They're in the temple because they're not powerful. Mm-hmm. They're in the temple because they are absolutely know they're not powerful, and they need to go and touch, touch, you know, have this, their, their own, own, their own experience with the divine and to process what's mm-hmm. going on. And yet God's like, no, 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 we're not done yet. <laughs> we're not done yet. There's going to be another few thousand people added, yeah, yeah. and you're going to be arrested. And, you know, the, if I'm in their shoes, I'm like, this is not what I was looking for. <laughs> this is not the answer to the prayer that I was asking. I was just asking. made my life busier. You, you made, made it busier. Made, and, made, it, made, it, made it harder. Yeah, yeah. But but, but then, there's, I mean, there's pure delight inside yeah. of them, and, and certainly the boldness as well. So, or what do you call it? Cheerful, 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 cheerful courage. Cheerful courage. Cheerful courage, but and then we tend to, and I do this too. We, I think, we as church leaders always try to think about, you know, what's the next program, what's the next ministry, and that's perfectly fine thing for us to do. That's what I mean. That's what, but ultimately, it's something that you said last week in your message, remembering that God is in charge of the growth. Yeah, I mean, you said that in your message last week yeah. that it cannot be. That's the. Um... Corinthians, uh, I, I watered Apollos, yeah. or I, I planted the seed, Apollos water, but God causes the growth. Yeah, and and it's unexpected, and it can't always be planned out. I mean, this was yeah. not the expectation, and you can't, you can't, uh, you can't plan for the resistance either. God, but God is also not, uh, God is also not surprised by the resistance mm-hmm. or caught off guard, and actually uses the resistance for future growth within the church, which mm-hmm. we didn't, I mean, neither one of us was able to get to, but when Peter and John leave prison, they go back to the the gathering of believers, and I always wonder how many, because if you're talking about 5,000 people at this, 5,000 men at this point, how many people are they going back and talking to? Is it just the core group of 150 that they started? Who knows? But even, what, that's a, even that's not a small number. So. Even that's not a small number, but they go back, and what do they do? They pray. They all collectively pray for boldness. I mean, so you get yeah. this this unity and this camaraderie in Acts chapter 2, and then in Acts chapter 4, they're continuing to grow internally as they're growing externally, and the the, the cultivation point for God in this moment is the resistance of the mm. external church. Is it, I do, so, I do so think that, that's there. I do think that, and I, I didn't say this, um, and, I'll, and, and you didn't either, but if we just drill that down to the personal level, I would hope that a let's say a spouse who's living with an unbelieving spouse yeah. and is facing some opposition, some sure. pushback. I mean, I I wasn't a believer when Seal and I were married at one point as well, and I gave her pushback. Wow! And she she uh, she just stayed the course. Yeah, she stayed faithful to her thing. I, I do hope that that a message like this would be useful on the personal level for people who are facing it. And I was saying something that's earlier a great about, the, point. It's a great about point, Thanksgiving yeah. dinners. You yeah. know, that's a great some kind of larger yeah. family gathering when you bring which out is the, external opposition, even though it's from from friendly fire, family, friendly yeah. fire. But it's it's people that are outside the faith, right? Outside so faith, yeah, yeah, that's a great so, point. So anytime you're you're running up against someone with a, a completely different ideological system than you. You know, the, the, I would, I do hope that that this call for this cheerful g- courage and boldness uh, with Jesus, staying on message, is, uh, is, is staying on message, that that the the 
culmination of the, our messages, which comes out of what we see Peter and John doing, which we think is, is in fact, transferable across time. I do th- hope that that would be something that would be useful yeah. for people listening. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff here. We could continue oh, to talk yeah. about all the different aspects of it, I, I, you know, and uh, there's more this week coming up. Uh, Pastor John and I are switching places to close out this uh, this week. Um, I'll be in Classic, as we said. You'll be in Vine. Uh, it's a Communion Sunday. So uh, we've got uh, a lot of fun there as well, too, along, which makes a lot of sense as we're closing out a, a little mini-series on church uh, growth. And uh, then we kick off Malachi. Mm-hmm. In, now we get to announce it. We get to announce it. Malachi. If you want to do a little advanced reading, folks? Yeah. Uh, won't, won't take you won't long. Won't take you long. But, but we're going to spend some yeah, time on that. We're, we're going to dig deep on that. Yeah, gonna dig we will go through every word. Every word of it. And, uh, you know, if you missed this week's message in our series or any one of our series, do encourage you to head to our website, fpclakeland.org. Click on the sermon page and the, ser- uh, the, the worship page in the sermon archive tab to watch complete uh, services, both classic and our modern fine service. Or you can head to our YouTube page, FPC Lakeland. Uh, just search for FPC Lakeland and or youtube.com backslash FPC Lakeland. Watch Watch complete uh, services there as well uh, as many other, uh, many, many other um, videos that we, we load up. Be, her, be sure uh, to hit the subscribe button if you do uh, head to our YouTube page so you can be notified uh, when a new episode drops. And wherever you're listening to the podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, also hit the subscribe button so that you know when a new episode drops because summertime will also create challenges with the recording of the podcast. Sure, sure. So we you will want to, you want to know when sometimes we'll have guest uh, guests here. Uh, sometimes we won't typically, if I'm not around, that means we will not have a podcast because it is a lot harder to do this when I'm not here. Okay. So and you, and you are the producer, uh, the and, producer, and director, director, editor, <laughs> sometimes editor, sometimes we don't need to edit anything. And for most people, uh, this is a hit record and, that's Stop. pretty much it, and uh, we've got it down to a really nice, tight, tight window. Yeah. So, but be be sure wherever you're listening to hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified if and when a new episode drops. I'll try to keep you updated um, in the weeks before if we're not going to have a podcast in the next week. Pastor John, hey, great job as always. As always, exactly. thank this is a, this is a great great uh, work, great tool, great for us as the as the as the preaching pastors, main yeah. preaching pastors, and. And uh, hopefully uh, everyone listening, you've enjoyed it as well. Yep, yep. Thank you, John. I appreciate you. And for everyone else, we will see you next time.